It is Eating Disorder Awareness Week in the UK, so I spoke with Laura Yohas. She has previously suffered with bulimia and is now an avid amateur boxer. Laura speaks openly about her past struggles with eating disorders across her social media channels and helps others spot the signs of eating disorders. Her Instagram is laurahelenaj at laura underscore hits. If you feel like you're suffering from an eating disorder, remember to seek professional help from a trusted GP or qualified dietitian. So basically, Laura, do you want to just tell us what your own experiences with eating disorders, what you went through yourself and why you think that came about? Yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, for a very long time, I actually didn't even know that my behaviours and what I was going through would in a sort of medical terms now be classified as an eating disorder. I mean, I think I go, I went through like a phase that a lot of people I know go through sort of in their late teens, early 20s of, you know, suddenly, you know, you come out of uh, of school and um, as you know, teenage years can be brutal for, for some of us. And, um, you know, you're already at a very vulnerable age. And uh, yeah, for me, I've always been quite into sports and um, I uh, it started all quite... Uh, quite harmlessly it's just a bit of you know fitness and trying to get fit um to be honest I was never very much informed about dieting I've always um sort of thought you know weight loss is a a positive thing because weight loss is associated with you know positive feedback um that's sort of how we grew up especially sort of in the 90s early 2000s because I think that was almost like the the body uh, types and the standards that um we could see in society so obviously everyone was trying to be thin and um yeah for me it was very normalized behavior at first and um it didn't come overnight um it started off with you know you, you try one diet after another etc until you finally find something that whenever it, it suddenly produces results and you started you start losing weight um you know then you, you just stick to it and you just slowly but surely drive it into a more extreme form of, of building habits around it i'm quite glad i was able to work it out what advice would you give to someone who does have an eating disorder now or who maybe has one and doesn't even realize they have one and maybe listening to this and they're like oh that actually sounds like a lot of that sounds familiar to what i think you said yeah i mean that was really what was, was a key thing for me is because for a long time i thought these behaviors were absolutely normal it wasn't until i was sitting over a toilet throwing up that I thought okay wait a minute this isn't right but I, for me for a year I thought you know counting calories swapping food groups you know you want a donut but not it's, it's too bad for you so instead I go and have half an apple you, if you want a donut then have a donut you know you can't swap everything out so um, if you are I would say if if, if a lot of your time on your dra- daily basis is around preparing food thinking what you're going to eat next making plans a thing and i still catch myself doing that sometimes a thing i do if i go to a restaurant is i look up the menu online earlier so that i can see okay which one will be the healthiest option again in general every now and then if i'm cutting for wait for a fight yes that's okay but if that's every single time you eat if um if your mind, let's say 60, 70% of the time occupied with, preoccupied with how you look and what you're going to eat next, that's really not good. And if, if, if you've, so I would say it's even good to talk to someone, even if you don't fit all of the, let's say, clinical criteria, yeah. if you have a relationship with food that, you know, has a lot of good and bad language. So you were talking earlier on about that photo that I posted with the, you know, the different things that people were saying to me. Um, it's not only people on social media that say it. I, I hear it every day. If I go to the work canteen and I sit down and I have my lunch, I can hear someone say, "Oh, you're so good today, Laura." You know, because I've got broccoli on my plate, or you know, and and it's that sort of whole mentality around food being good and bad. And there is no um, good or bad. There is, there, really? there is, and and uh, one of my favorite quotes of all time from from Renny McGregor uh, is that she says, "Foods are like friends and." like with some friends there's some that you want to spend more time with than with others but there's a place for every every food group in your life so trying to figure out that balance and honoring your hunger honoring a craving if you really want a donut then have one you know don't um 
don't don't deprive yourself, don't deprive yourself. and uh, yeah if, if, if being around food makes you anxious I remember for a long time and especially again in a work related thing um, there's often situations where there's food involved you know for meetings or you know you're going for restaurants if things like that make you anxious then you really need to yeah to talk to someone um, it can be somebody who's close to you initially uh, or 100% recommend uh, Beat UK um, which is one of is the leading eating disorder charity if you're in Northern Ireland um, the EDA and I uh, they have a website there's a, a free uh, phone number uh, you can go and see the counselors face to face you can only talk to them on the phone um, I'm to the day I'm still checking with my former counselor every now and then and we actually meet up for coffee sometimes because nice. yeah it is like we've, we have we've built a really really good relationship and um, we ended up talking about so much more than you know just the the, the food uh, side of things and um, yeah they're, they're very professional they're very good and you you don't feel judged yeah so for me that was really important is that where you see any people talking to people you know how to help people spot if they're friends or family having these things where that's the sort of things you look out for you know people that are avoiding gatherings are overly portioning their food to the point of like almost like obsessive. yeah there's actually i think beat uh uk put up a post on that this morning and also if you have a suspicion that someone has an eating disorder that's close if you contact one of the charities even as a supporter they can help you um with that so for example um there's a, a, a friend of mine from from my old hometown and uh, she suffered from anorexia nervosa very very badly i mean she, she almost died from it and uh, for many years and her mother um was supported by one of the local charities there as well because obviously as somebody caring for a child with an eating disorder that can be absolutely draining and those people need help and support as well so um absolutely so i remember my my boyfriend when i when i started um when i when i told him that you know this is what, what was happening or what i was thinking was happening um he actually got in touch with with eda as well and you know to see if there's any way that he can he can help me um because sometimes unfortunately the people who are very close to us who want to help us maybe don't help us in the best way yeah. um by being you know overly controlling and then you know they want to say you know they they you feel even more watched um, with what you're with what you're doing, so that results in more secrecy. No, thank you so much. Thank you.